What's good? Welcome to First Drink Podcast. On today's episode of First Drink Podcast, we have David Harrison from the Lock on Commanders pod. Also, he writes for Sports Illustrated. In today's episode, we will address a couple of things. We'll get an update from David on what the commanders have done. We'll ask the question, did the Bears squander the chance to trade Justin Fields to get the most out of what they did? We'll look at the quarterbacks in the NFC South. That says hometown and division. We'll get out, get you all ready for uh, March Madness, females and males brackets. A couple of other things too, as well. I hope y'all ready. It's time to go. Let's get it. Yeah. First Dream Podcast. Yeah. Two Danny. Dream on the beat. You know. Yeah. What's your favorite squad? Tell me who you going with. Who you going First with? Dream Podcast. Yeah, we keep it lit. We got the latest updates. We don't pump fake. Like, come and share. We don't care. Feel free to hate. Hater. We got great guests. Join us. You should chime in. Trudini on the intro for the time being. Uh, Lady A. What? Represent Washington. Uh, pick Washington. Everything Washington. Yeah. Mo coming out of Dallas. You know the business. What? Said them Georgia Bulldogs ain't quitting. Uh, yeah. If you ain't watching sports, you ain't living. Yeah. About to get my mattress mac on. About to bet a million. Bet a million. Let's talk about it. We all grown and cool. We can talk about it. Before we hit the news, we gon' talk about it. Oh, you wanna bet? Let's pop a bottle bow. Yeah. Welcome back to First Spring Podcast. Do not forget to like and subscribe to First Spring Podcast. Hit the bell to enable alerts for new content just like this. And the most important part is that you tell a friend to tell a friend about First Dream Podcast. That good thumbs up as well. If you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, or something like that, give us that love bug. We really do appreciate you for doing that. It is time to bring in the squad. Sid, how are you doing, bro? What's going on, my bro? What to do, what to do. How are you? I'm feeling, I'm feeling better. Here. I'm feeling it better. I'm feeling a lot, lot better. Uh, we appreciate everyone for uh, bearing with us on Saturday. Now it's time to bring in the head honcho, the lady in charge, the HR, Lady A. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm glad that, you know, you're feeling better. Thank That's you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, little bro, you ready? Little bro's ready. Here we go. How you doing, Aunt? <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Hey, he came in. He came in right on time. He knew you were right. He's real jazzy. He's real jazzy. He said hot. He did say hot. Yes. All right. So we're gonna bring in a fan favorite. What about uh? What about? Ow! How you doing, man? How you doing? <laughs> how you all doing? We doing Pretty real good. good. Can y'all hear me fine? I'm having some. I'm having some mic issues over here. So just making sure I, be, oh. I can hear it crystal clear. Okay, good, yeah. good. Get it together. Okay, so what we're gonna do now? We're going six pack here. We got our guest for tonight, David Harrison, with us. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing great, man. How's how's everybody doing? I appreciate y'all having me on your show. Yes, yes. We we have been uh, I have been told get David on the show. Get David on the show. So I listened and I reached out and said, "Hello, David. How are you? Can you get back with us?" And you said, "Yes, glad." And we are so happy for it. Um. Commanders have been very, very busy this offseason. You had a chance to see them move forward at the uh, the NFL Combine, and then right out of that is free agency. Uh, run through it for us, please. Yeah, I mean, quite the – I don't even know if you want to call it a facelift quite yet, but, I mean, I think I think most people are pretty happy to see what the Washington Commanders are doing right now, bringing in a lot of people. I think uh, I was talking to some people on locker room clean-out day at the end of the 2023 season, and I kind of speculated high-end, like 60% turnover. and. And I haven't done the math quite yet, but I mean, we're we're pretty we're looking pretty good. I think we're at uh, you know well over thirty three percent, maybe close to forty percent. I mean, uh, you know, there there's a lot of new names, a lot of new faces that would come in there, and and you know, uh, for sure, the expectation coming out of twenty twenty three was that the next time we step foot in that locker room, it's going to feel a lot different, it's going to look a lot different, and that is that is what's being delivered. You know what I mean? But you also have uh, four guys so far coming back. Certainly, maybe could have some more guys coming back with the Washington Commanders. I don't think they're done completely just yet, but you know they're there's uh they're starting to run out uh, as amazing as it might sound. They're starting to run out of spots. They've only got 13 spots left until they hit their 90 man uh, roster limit, and that's counting the nine draft picks. So assuming they actually spend all nine draft picks, 
Uh, they've got 13 more people they can bring in. Teams usually bring in about 10, 15, 20. Uh, 20 is about the upside, but 10, 15 undrafted free agents after the NFL draft. So the commanders are probably, you know, a couple of moves away from, from being done for now. But I think what they've done so far is bring in guys that fit the mentality, fit the message that Adam Peters and Dan Quinn uh, and all the assistant coaches and coordinators have been selling. And they've got some good leaders uh, coming in. And they've also got some young guys that if they prove themselves to be, uh, you know, integral parts of, of the program moving forward could, could, could certainly stick around for a while. Uh, I got to ask you, what was your favorite move that the commanders made so far this year? So my favorite move that's, so there's, there's a lot of layers to that type of question, but I'm going to tell you my favorite guy so far is Frankie Louvu. I cannot wait uh, to see Frankie Louvu run around the field and he's someone. So, you know, I cover the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I've covered them longer. Uh, then I cover the Washington Commanders, although I cover the Commanders in person. So, I mean, you know, uh, one, or, you know six of six of one, half a dozen of the other. But Frankie Louvre, obviously, coming from the Carolina Panthers, he's someone that I've gotten to see uh, multiple times over the years. He's always been a player that when I do get to see him, I, I enjoy the way that he plays the game. I like the intensity uh, that he plays with. And then actually getting to speak to him now in his introductory press conference to see that. The, the 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 personality that you see on the field is kind of the personality you also get uh, at least over the zoom camera obviously i haven't seen him in, in person in the flesh yet but at least via zoom right you you kind of see that same type of intensity behind his eyes and in the way that he talks and, and so you can kind of see where that personality comes from it's it's always an interesting contrast some of these guys are like super nice like teddy bearish type dudes you know off the field and then they get on the field and they're spitting in each other's faces and all these other things but frankie you kind of see he's, he's got kind of a consistent personality. It just probably elevates a little bit more on the football field. But very excited to see him come into town, and I'm very excited to see uh, what he gets to do with this team. And, and he's a guy that, I mean, you look at his contract three years. We've also tacked on two void years on that, so they're going to account for him over the next five years uh, in theory. But he's a guy that they obviously feel very strongly about because he's a, he's a dude that you can expect to be around for at least two years. All right, Lady A. So I'm right there with you um, as far as these moves. Uh, I'm excited to see the changes when you have a team that did so terrible, you need to clean house. <laughs> and that's what they did. Um, there were some people that I was screaming for them to leave for a few years now. I'm on record saying that. Um, they're gone. Let's keep it moving. Um there are a lot of changes that I like. Um, I would say that our change for GM is mm -hmm. my favorite move. Um, okay. My change for GM, and then it kind of trickles down after that. Each hire is, is, for me, is a good move. It's a great step into the right direction because our coaching staff wasn't it. Our front office wasn't it. Um, I hope no one pulls footage from the draft from last year, but I was quite upset. Um, so I, I feel like this is the, a step in the right direction. I'm curious to see what they're going to do for the draft. Um, so my favorite is is our, our GM. Say it. Um, one, of, one of the things I still have a question, I got a question right now as well is the trading of Sam Howell, who at which um, team, because uh, I've, I've noticed they've also looked at a couple of the teams outside of who I thought them it would. They would look at quarterback-wise. Which quarterback do you think they're showing the most interest in, draft-wise? You're asking me? Yeah. Yep. So I will tell you right now that this organization, this front office, you talk about new front offices, right? This one has been very, very close to the vest. And uh, as a media member, I would love it if they weren't, right? I would love it if they were a little bit looser with what they want to do. But as, as a general person, if you're a Commanders fan, you certainly enjoy the fact that they're very close to the vest. But I think that when you listen to the way that they're speaking, right, the mentality they want to have, and you hear about, you know, the focus of style of play, uh, the kind of player they're looking for, the kind of leader they're looking for in the locker room, and then you look at some of the history of some of the coaches uh, that you're dealing with here on the staff. I think Jane Daniels certainly makes a lot of sense, right? The the question with Jane Daniels is whether or not he's ready to to make every NFL throw. When you when you turn on his tape, there's some there's some areas of his game that are missing from LSU, and the question that you have to answer if you're the Washington Commanders is is that missing 
because they just didn't need to put it in there. So they didn't need to put it in there. Right. And you kind of go back to, to guys like Garrett Wilson out of Ohio state, or even Michael Thomas, when he was coming out of Ohio state, because that Buckeye offense is very simplistic. They don't have a really wide expansive route tree that they ask their receivers to run. So a lot of their receivers come out of, of the, of the NFL draft looking very underrated. Terry McLaurin uh, is another one. He came out of Ohio state. A lot of people say he doesn't run the full route tree. Well, it's not that he couldn't run it. He just was never asked to run at Ohio State. So that's the question is, is it that Jaden Daniels can't make every throw, especially uh, short intermediate throws over the middle, which are missing from his LSU tape? Or is it that LSU just didn't ask him to do it or scheme the middle of the field open for him? So if he wanted to run, there was space. It could be, could be. either of those things. Um, I think J.J. McCarthy is an interesting one. I don't know if you guys heard or not, but Bleacher Report. And, and I haven't confirmed this, so you know I don't, I don't know the full validity of it, but the Washington Commanders are flying out early. Uh, ahead of Michigan's pro day to have dinner with JJ McCarthy. Mm -hmm. And he's a guy who made a lot of money at the scouting combine, certainly impressed a lot of people, impressed the media during his media session there as well, threw really well. So, you know, is that more, I feel like that's more of, you know, if we get blown away with an offer, maybe we trade back and we feel comfortable taking a guy like JJ more than it is. They love JJ, but I think that that style of quarterback is kind of something you're looking for. And well, <clears throat> To quote the great Denzel, great <laughs> debaters, keep the body, take the mind. Y'all getting rid of Dan was the best move that you could have ever done. Doesn't matter what talent you put on the field. I'll say it a different way that I might get fined for. You can have the greatest physique in the world, but if you smoke crack, it's going to go to hell, Okay. Let me, I'll let, let you me, make the judgment on that. Let but. me just say that with all honesty. What is wrong with you? <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> well, let him, I'm, on back, I'm on back support anyway for not paying me. So, you know, you can't find me and not pay me. It don't work both ways. No, well, you ain't going to get a job. I mean, a payment. What are you doing? <laughs> holding everything. Hey, my clients ain't nearly as big as it says were. So, there's no way I should be receiving some payment. But no, uh, <laughs> Seriously, though, I think everything starts with getting Dan out of there. Um, we, we, we joked about it before, but you love when all the teams in that division are able to click, have some level of success. And, you know, of course, the GM was a great move because he comes from success. Uh, but all these moves that they're making are scary to me, to be honest. Uh, and y'all know I'm not the I'm not the pom pom cowboy fan that that some people are. But I man, I think that with these moves, they have the the very easy potential of finishing ahead of the Dallas Cowboys without trying. So wow. that, you know that that's just my my hot unhot take. I don't know if y'all already think y'all believe that, but they're they're looking these moves are looking very good. David, I'll let you answer that question. Uh, did you make those throws at Arizona State? Not very often, but I. But here's what I want to say about Jaden Taylor's at Arizona State. Don't don't blame Jaden for a lot of the things that were happening there. Look, I, I I love Coach Herm Edwards. I still text Coach Herm Edwards to this day. I'm an Arizona State grad, so I've got a little bit of connection there. Rashad White is a Buccaneers running back, so like I've got a lot of affinity for Sun Devils. But that that program is not in a good state at that time, so I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily lean. And I tell you right now, the scouts are not going so far back to look at Arizona State tape, but. No, there, there's a lot missing from Jaden's uh, game during his Arizona State Arizona State days, but I wouldn't hold that against him. Right. Al. Dave, I've got a question. Yeah. Having a new GM and a new coach, whose influence you think is going to be most on this draft in regards to which way they go with picks? Because both of them have a lot. The GM probably had a longer leash, I think, than maybe the coach, but they kind of came in hand in hand. Who do you think is going to have the most influence on which way they go with the picks? Uh, I think I think if you have to narrow down to one, it's 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 going to be a team effort, like bottom line, right? But I think that if you have to narrow down to one of those guys, it's going to be Dan Quinn, uh, <laughs> because Adam Peters. If you look at where Adam Peters comes from, there's there's a history here of San Francisco 49ers going back to his successful days of the Denver Broncos, and you even look at the New England Patriots. I mean, the New England Patriots, bottom line, have a coach centric draft strategy, right? Like what the coach wants, who the coach needs. That's what you go and get. Now, when you look at what the Denver Broncos were able to do, the team that they were looking to build in the front office that Adam grew up in there, it's, it's another situation where you have a GM and a front office is trying to make decisions to give the coaches what they're asking for. And in theory, that's what every GM should be doing, right? Is going and giving the coaches what it is that they're asked for, what they're in need, in need of. But unfortunately it doesn't actually work that way. And 
some of your franchises that you see around the NFL that struggle consistently. That's part of the reason why is the GM is drafting for one thing or one style and the coach is trying to coach for a different thing or a different style. And because of the team centric focus that all these guys have, I just think that Adam Peters, when he hears Dan Quinn, when he hears Cliff Kingsbury, Joe Wood Jr., you know, all these guys say, Adam, this is the kind of guy we need. We're missing, you know, X type of personality, X type of, of character trait from our offense, from our defense, whatever it is. We need to go get this type of player. He's going to go get that type of player for the team. So that's the only reason I say Dan okay. Quinn, not in the sense that Dan Quinn is going to write a name on the card and say, here, Adam, here's the name you're saying, if that makes sense. So Dan can buy, so Dan's going to be able to find a grocery. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm not saying. Being, a- being, being, that, <laughs> being, being that he just left the Atlanta Falcons in shambles. We pick the guys we want. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this. Dan Quinn can't pick players. Don't, don't take it personal. I don't want no commander fan to take this personal. Because he was in Atlanta. Now, if he, if he tell the GM what he wants, and they pick right. somebody who fit that scheme, cool. Right. Exactly. His player picking skills are right. suspect. Yeah, yeah. Don't but Dan's not going to say. In Dallas, right. defensively, he inherited that. He you didn't want- create that was in Dallas. Those guys were there. They well, and those scheme. guys didn't necessarily fit his scheme. He just was able to whip up another good meal with what he but had. He didn't pick him. He's saying a chef. That. He's a chef. He yeah. didn't pick him. That's my only point. So, that, so that's a valid point. That's, that's, that's exactly that. what I'm saying. Like, It's not that Dan Quinn is going to say, this is the player we're taking at X amount of pick. It's going to be, you know, I'm trying to think of a better way to kind of say it. But like, if you're, if you're make if the team is a pizza, it's like, hey, Adam, we're missing a protein. Go find me a protein that's spicy and has got a little bit of weight to it. Adam's going to go can, find the protein. That. Dan's not going to pick the protein. If that makes sense. I was going to okay. play his favorite person right there. I got a question for Ant real quick. Ant and uh, Aunt David and Al. So you said he inherited what he got from Dallas, right? He's not a coordinator anymore. He's a head coach. So right. now wouldn't it be more on the defensive coordinator to make this meal right? Ant? I mean, he wasn't a defensive coordinator when he was in Atlanta. That's what said keeps going back to. The, yeah. the question is, has he learned from the mistakes that he made? There you go. You know, is he able to better assess what his own strength and weakness, strengths and weaknesses are, like the coach that is now in Atlanta? <clears throat> what 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 did you, what what did he say? Uh, it was one, I think it was the last show. He said uh, something about the uh, we want to make a program like mirroring what they have in the Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. smart. He comes Andrew. from winning. That means you're gonna you, you could possibly get some of those players. But it don't mean that you pulling every trigger. I think, I think my only issue with Sed's assessment is that uh, because of because of his connectivity to him is recency bias. We <laughs> gotta give him the same ability to show and prove as anybody else that's retreading the NFL. So yeah, we do. I, yes, I, we do. That's I right. I think it's a collective do, effort overall. I agree with you, Ant. <laughs> So I'll, I'll tell you this, you already everything. have evidence that Dan Quinn has learned from what happened in Atlanta. And really, if you really look at it, he learned while he was in Atlanta because the, the final year there, the year that he ultimately ends up getting fired, uh, you know, he at least, uh, and you can give credit wherever you want, but he makes the decision to turn the reins over the defense to Raheem Morris. And what Raheem Morris ends up doing is really interesting, introducing more of an odd front defense to the Atlanta Falcons versus what Dan was running, which is more of an even front uh, cover three type of defense, which is what Dan was successful with in Seattle, the Legion of Boom and all that craziness, right? Mm-hmm. So what Dan fell into in Atlanta was a trap that a lot of head coaches fall into, which is, well, this worked before. We just need to make it work again. And what Dan learned in Atlanta, which is what he told us when he arrived, is that what worked before doesn't necessarily work anymore. And yeah. it's not about fixing or forcing it to work. It's about figuring out what you need to change in order to work. So Raheem Morris essentially introduces an odd front defense in the Atlanta Falcons uh, defense, makes them more of a pass rush heavy, you know, and it, and it got better, right? Everything went a little bit better. Certainly did not enough to keep them uh, employed. But then when Dan takes over the Dallas Cowboys defense, so if you look at like the Dallas Cowboys depth chart, it looks like a 4-3 defense, right? Two DNs, two defensive tackles, three linebackers. But when you look at the usage of the Dallas Cowboys defense under Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr., it's an odd front defense. They're rushing with three down linemen, one down lineman, even two down linemen, much more than they are with four down linemen. That's a drastic shift in the way that Dan Quinn runs a defense, and you see it really take hold in Dallas. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to say that Raheem Morris taught him that per se, but at least in the form of executing an odd front defense with Dan Quinn, obviously something there clicked. And I'm personally, I have an affinity for odd front defenses 
because I like having more linebackers roaming, more safeties roaming uh, around the field. It just gives you more flexibility, more chess moves to make, uh, and more creativity. And I think that's where Dan got better with the Dallas Cowboys. I think you see Micah Parsons, the first year under Dan Quinn. Micah Parsons was exciting. Certainly you saw the potential, but not quite as explosive, quite a, a game wrecker in his first year. But then you see him shift, Dan Quinn, that is, shift the way they use Micah Parsons in the last two years that he's in Dallas. And that's really where Micah Parsons become who becomes who he is now. Uh, so I think you see a coach that is not only learning from his history, but also continuing to develop uh, because he could have certainly left my, like everybody loved Micah after his first year, right? So he could have left him in that position and been like, look, continue to love him there. But instead he moved him around and found a better way to get him involved. So I think that certainly is something I think Frankie Louvu probably right now would be the guy that I project to fit the Micah Parsons role. Not saying that he's going to turn into Micah Parsons. That's very important. Right, but right. I think that that's kind of the, I think Frankie is kind of the chess piece that if, if Frankie clicks with this coaching staff and this style of play, he can really unlock a lot of things for the defense. Listen, I'm going to need y'all to stop acting like it's hard to become Michael Parsons, okay? It's not hard to show halfway flashes throughout the regular oh, season, you know, completely disappear in the playoffs, and go. make excuses, and walk out of interviews. I would stop acting like this guy is anything su superiorly elite or something, okay? The guy barely may have a sack in the freaking uh, playoffs, for crying out loud. He got two again. Uh, let's not get into this, okay? Stop so, acting like this guy's Mr. Special. Dallas Cowboys He's fan. a good player. That's it. Right. That's what he's saying, <laughs> Mr. Cowboys fan. This, that's what he's saying. Can you can you say hey, look? I watch Chris I watch Michael Parsons twice a year. I'll take your word for it. See, that's what, what you say. That's what you say. No, that's All my right. point. Leave her alone. Let's ask this question here. All right. So um, we got to get this in before David has to go. Um, thank you for your time as well, David, um, for always being available to us. The question is about the NFC South quarterbacks here. This is going to go mm. around the room. We're going to mm -hmm. have David answer it first, okay? I want you to stack the NFC South quarterbacks now. Now, those quarterbacks in that division now are Kirk Cousins. Um, oh, boy. Your boy, your tamper. Baker Mayfield, mm -hmm. Carr, and Bryce Young. Uh, stack those uh, quarterbacks for us, please. So, okay. So, how do you want me to stack them? What are we stacking? Top, to, top to bottom. Top to bottom. Like for this year, or this year coming up? This year coming up? Yes, for sir. This year, Baker, Kirk, Derek, and Bryce. Bryce still on the bottom. No improvement. Yeah, man. The Carolina Panthers are a mess. No the Carolina weapons. Panthers. No weapons. Any hope? Yeah. No weapons. Okay. Yeah. So that's Baker first. You got yeah. Kirk second. Car and then Baker. All right, Al, get at it. Stack them. Oh man, you're not gonna like this. One. I think I like Car on a rebound year and second in the system. One, then Baker. No, I'm sorry, then Kirk, then Baker, and Bryce. They get Bryce some help, man. I, I I really like Bryce. I'm hoping for Bryce, but he has no help down there. You know, I mean, like I said, I don't know what Carolina really is doing. As a franchise, I'm really disappointed in them being at my parents' home state, but I mean, I'm in North Carolina. But I think I think Carr's going to have a real. I, I don't ask me why I have no reason to feel this other than just inside. Um, that Carr's going to have a bounce back year. It's not a it's not a hard division to win, so I don't think um, being I think all the teams, the top three teams, going to be going to be nip and tuck all year like they were last year. But I think um, I think I like the defense with. Um, I like the defense with um, New Orleans. I like the fact I do like the fact that they've gotten rid of Michael Thomas. I think Chris Olave is going to have a big year this year, um, and I think he's going to gel with um, Michael Thomas. I mean, I'm sorry with um, Derek Carr, and I think Baker's going to kind of come back to the pack a little bit. I think Kirk's going to still his second half going to be better, better than his first. His second half going to be better than his first half. Coming with the um, getting another new offense and coming off of the um, Achilles surgery, and I just Carolina has no help. All right, and. This is truly the battle of mediocre quarterback play. Um, and with that being said, there's no way I could put Baker Mayfield one regardless to say that to leave the impression that he regressed to the pack is crazy work. Uh, I will go with the hopeful of a guy that showed a lot of promise and upside was drafted number one for a reason. And, and, and I'm going to hold it out. We always are going to give number one picks more more uh more, more, more line yeah give him a more line i'm gonna go bryce first uh, i'm gonna go with the guy who has the most playoff wins uh left and that would be baker then we're gonna go kirk and then i'm gonna go uh david carr i'm sorry alvin 
that guy is he's he's the worst of the mediocre. <laughs> he's just media. Come on, he's got enough chances, bro. He's done. I, right. I said I he's said done. I'm going for gut, man. I don't know. Let's if get got, Lady but... A. Lady A. <sighs> so I'm looking at my list and I'm like, Ant was cheating. Again, <laughs> like Ant's always looking over my shoulder to you see. Keep my hand. in the chat. The hey, chair. I'm looking over your shoulder because you're taller than me, Ed Pick. That happens. Okay. <laughs> but I have Baker Mayfield. Then I believe it or not, I have Kirk Cousins. Um, then I have Carr. Bryce, I want to, I want to move him up. I really do, but we can't. Not yet. But this isn't a good batch. Hey, it's the South. It's the first one we hit. Just say it's, it's a good batch. You, well, you forgot to put the eggs in. Yeah, it's, it's not a good batch. A little batch. under the, 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 the line here. But All right. nonetheless, I, I follow the rules. So I have Baker, uh, Mayfield, Kirk Cousins. I have Mr. Carr and Bryce. All right, say there it. Let me hear it. We're on the same page. It, be, it's, it's, I mean, well, it, it is what it is. It's <laughs> NFC South. Um, uh, there's been a lot of transition in NFC South, so there's there's no need to try to hide what's going on. Uh, Tampa went out there and it loaded a, a, a ton of money for Baker Mayfield. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I really don't want him in Atlanta. You put that up there first. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with David on this one. Um, the fact is, I mean, until I see Baker Mayfield fall back, which I, I don't think he's going to do better than he did last year, but he does have some of those weapons back. And it's a flip-flop between David Carr and and uh, what's that boy name? Uh, Kirk Cousins. Uh, Kirk Cousins has won exactly one playoff game. So there's there no, there no, no impressing me right there. I mean, it is what it is. He <laughs> was undefeated going to the playoffs and y'all got smashed. So, you know, and has missed me with that until he shows me that he can do anything. It's the two and three is tied. Take your pick. You can flip flop though. David Carr and 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 Kirk Cousins. All two right, and three, you. you can reverse if you want to. And Stroud, he un unless they bring in enough people to help that guy in Carolina, he was completely running for his life all year. Let's 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 not be there. Let's let's, let's not uh, uh, discount what has happened out there. You know, you got rid of the running back. You got rid of the best wide receiver head on the squad before he got there. So he had no one. He had no one. So, but that doesn't speak to his skill, Sid. I'm gonna tell y'all the real reason why he got him number four. What's what school did he play for? He yeah. played for Alabama. Uh -huh. Yeah, I knew it was something. He said he played something. for Alabama. Listen, <laughs> hey, uh, David, we really do appreciate your time. I know you said you got to watch a lot of film. Who are you watching tonight? Oh man, I haven't actually decided yet who I'm watching. I let my insiders pick. Uh, we did cornerbacks for for Tuesday episode. Where the next film study is coming up Thursday's episode. I got to ask them which free agents they want to look at. I'm hoping they pick linebackers because I want to dive more into not only Frankie but also Bobby. But yeah, I let I let them pick. So I don't know yet. All right. Well, good luck. Get to working on that film. They say it, it's not real work if it's passion. So hopefully you're not up too late and you get it all done. Thank you. I'll be time. up late, but it's fun, so I can't complain. I appreciate y'all. All right, thank you. That right, is David Harrison, um, our Ooh. guy from the Locked On Commanders podcast, also contributes to SI. Thank him again for his time. All right, Sid, um, you ready for this next topic? <laughs> Always, man. All right, is, I'm not sure if we're going to see hit, Sid hit the moon or not, but y'all know this topic right here was close to his heart. Let's get at it. Um, the question is, did the Bears squander the best opportunity to trade Justin Fields? Um, Sid, uh, we'll let you kick this one off, buddy. We'll let okay, you uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm in there. You can, you can put me up in there. Oh, my. Uh, um, um, I think the Bears did. I think the Bears, the Bears thought that the, uh, the market was going to heat up all of a sudden and everybody was going to be coming after Justin Fields. I think whatever they had a chance to get from Atlanta, they should have because the factors would affect what they said a few minutes ago. Yeah, uh, 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 cousin may be a, a little bit better quarterback at the time, but he's won exactly one playoff game. One playoff game. He's 36 years old. So at this point, 
you got a guy who has one year living contract with a possibility of signing him to another contract because his numbers are down. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have to max him out. So this is what I'm talking about with Atlanta. So that's why I say I think Atlanta missed what they what they should have done in trying to get Justin Fields early. Then the Bears missed on trying to get what they could from Atlanta at the time before Atlanta signed Kirk Cousins. Because the fact is, the younger guy with a better chance, a better upside, you know, is, is the guy over here. Because in four years, we're going to be doing the same thing we're doing right now, <laughs> looking for a quarterback. So you you don't Pittsburgh, think you don't think Kirk Cousins is going to make it? Uh, he's thirty six pick. He's thirty six. He's thirty six pick. He is not Tom Brady. He doesn't have any chips. But this is the if first time he's Tom been Brady hurt. with chips. We could probably talk. But this is the first time he's been hurt though. He he he's won one playoff game. But he's been mediocre his whole what? career. Pick one pick. One. What does that matter? I'm just saying he, he's won one playoff. You, you, had you told me he'd been in the Super Bowl, uh, Cam Newton. Cam Newton. I, then, hey, we won't be having this conversation, but we are. Now I don't know, I don't know what happened at the last minute where they just decided to take a six round pick and send it from Pittsburgh to take him out of Pittsburgh with a possibility of turning to a four. What? Are you serious? I mean, a fourth rounder for for Justin Fields isn't bad though. That, I mean, I that, mean, that, that depends on playing time. unloaded so. him for little or nothing. This is what they did. I they, mean, the, the problem the problem with that is. You don't know what this kid is still. Right. You don't know if you're giving away the next two-time champion MVP of the league or if he's just a bum because you literally never put any pieces around this guy. Matter of fact, you traded them all off. <laughs> and then when you had an opportunity to capitalize on said picks, you did otherwise. So it doesn't make sense, really. This is really, this is really disrespectful. And I think it's hard to have the league, unless he was a – I don't know, some say he was six foot two, you know, 240, you know, something like that. His specs don't even match up with trying to act like you were going to get a big haul from him when all he's ever did was run for his life. So <laughs> it's kind of disrespectful, really, because you didn't give anybody a fair assessment of who he really was as a player. So I feel like they were trying to screw him over, maybe even trying to get him out the NFC just in case if he does end up being something great. Uh, Lady A. So – Let's rewind a little bit. Remember they said they were going to do right by him? They did. They did. Uh-huh. And remember what I said? I said they're not going to do right by him. They're going to do right by them. Yep. Who is going did. to offer them what they want? That's what they did. Doing right by him, to, it was not what they did. In my opinion, he's now QB2. Is he, is he about to start? Nope. Lady, Lady A, A did not say that, Don. Lady A. Lady A. Lady A did not say that, Don. You already know. But anyway, um, I, I don't I don't think that they did right with him. Um, I don't think they cared to do right by him. Um, and I said that before they even did him dirty. Um, it, it's as simple as that. I feel that Justin is in a position where you can only take what 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 is given to him at this point. Well, I, mean, I heard he blocked four trades before accepting to the Steelers. That's what I heard. But at the same time, what were those like? What did those look like? You know what I mean? Were, were they worse than being QB two at the state with the Steelers? Right. This may have been the best offer that he had. And they were. I don't feel they were. They they didn't do right by him in the season. But I, you can write by him now? No. I mean, listen. I think that Justin's going to a, a better place where from going from Chicago, which was a total, a total mess, right? He barely had a wide receiver. They gave him a wide receiver this year and still no offensive line, right? Still no offensive line, still running for his life. The time to trade him, I believe, was – it, last year in the, um, during the season, that was the time to trade him if you wanted to trade him because you already had a number one pick coming anyway. Best time. The way the way Carolina was going, that's about as high as you was going to get for him was last year during the season before the trade deadline. So 
it must not have been a market for him because that prop that deal probably would have gotten done then. The Atlanta Falcons probably could have used Justin Fields at that time too, as well, because y'all were, I think, around the, the trade deadline. I said, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all was thinking about going to Taylor Heineke at that time. Is that right? They did go to Taylor Heineke. I was around the trade to deadline. To him. Yeah, we are. Yeah, he was already playing. I mean, but, yeah. I, but I, I told y'all this. I told y'all this when the season started last year. That at some point during the season, they brought Tana Hank, Taylor Heineke in. No disrespect to him. That the season was old. Did I not say that? Yeah, I, I, I say those words because the fact is that means Arthur Smith, who head coach at the time, did not know what he was doing with the quarterback. He decided that <laughs> we were ready for it because we were the team running the senior board a year, and they had plenty of opportunity, unfettered opportunity to 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 watch it, see what he did, see what he did, what was good, what was bad. Can we fix this? And obviously, he got, he got some poor scouts because they didn't do their homework. Because had they done their homework, they would have saw that he was a, a ball turnover machine. Hey, we was here talking about Kenny Pickett hands. We should have been talking about Desert River hands. But, 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 Pick, here's to answer your question plainly. No, they didn't misuse their value. Why? Because the value, my value is assessed for what I'm willing to give you up for. Like, as a team, I can do what I want with you. I have your rights. Yeah, now, you do. I think overall he's in the best position outside of Atlanta that he could have been in, but they don't care. I, I, clearly, I, I, I think yeah. if, if nothing else fails, he was worth keeping if you don't feel like you got enough value for him for a six-round. I think so they, they did. If him. they gave him up for that, then that's what they he was worth. Pittsburgh holds them. Truthfully, Pittsburgh got the way better out the deal, in my opinion. Pittsburgh got the way better out the deal. Um, I, and I agree with him. If they weren't going to choose, they weren't going to get what they wanted. The best time to trade them, like I said, said, was middle of the season last year. If you're not going to get, if you didn't get, receive the offers that you wanted during this free agent period, period, you've seen numerous things in the past. I mean, I've heard earlier, just like Dallas did with um, Troy Aikman and, and Walsh. What's wrong with having two bona fide starting quarterbacks? If one you know you want to play this young and one that's been playing that you want to trade. I don't know why Chicago felt the angst to have to make a trade, especially if you're only going to get a six-rounder. Now, I understand from Pittsburgh's perspective, it's a no-lose situation. You got Russell on for a million dollars. He's on a one-year prove-it deal. You get you control, you control um fields for the next two years. You don't you, you're not going to commit to paying him a 20 million fifth year option because you have to make that decision this year. So he's not costing you a lot of money. So it makes all the sense for Pittsburgh to do it. I don't understand why Chicago felt that they, 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 they I think they pulled the trigger too quick. Bring in Caleb. Let, I mean, you know you're going to trade him, but you're more likely to get what you want after the draft or a better situation after the draft if someone misses on what they didn't get in the draft. I'm not sure so, about that because remember last year you had, I think, was it um, Joe Flacco was like the third quarterback for the Browns, right? Joe Flacco was like the third quarterback for the Browns. So right now what you see is a lot of quarterback movement in the NFL because teams know that last year we had a lot of quarterbacks hurt. But Joe we Flacco, you, you're talking hurt. about two first-round draft picks within three years on the same roster. I mean, like I said, you're, you're, you're more likely to get a higher draft pick then than you would potentially, in my opinion, of course. No, like problem. I said, I mean, like no I said, Steve Walton, we got, we got a first and a, I think a second and a fourth or a first, second and a fourth for Steve Walsh. 10, I mean, 20 years ago, of course, it was when we had Steve Walsh and Trick. Right. And we the, problem the, that is this. The, the problem with that is this, is that Justin Fields had the locker room. True. Because they had players go to management and said, we don't understand why you're getting rid of him. He does not have what he needs to be successful. That's now why they had to get rid of him now. Now he does. No, uh, no, he does now. Right, right. Now, he does now, now, but they're they not in a position, position to keep, keep him, him now because, because, of, because of the moves they made. Right, that's why they're trying to get rid of him now. They don't want to have to draft the quarterback. Caleb Williams come in, and the people's like, "Why are we not going to the field?" Because yeah. when you have players go to management, they didn't ask them what they thought. They was like, "Huh?" We had players coming to the to the into the manager say, "Hey, what's going on?" We stand behind this cat right here. He did his best with what y'all gave him, and you're gonna do him like this. That's why they ended up moving him for little or nothing and not waiting to the draft like you like you're talking about. Well, Don, I'll tell you right now, it's a lot of people that just uh 
they don't they don't want garbage a, a, a nice player they want some productive players which is why you see a lot of a lot of these coaches players they have to put their best out there right now because as you know NFL stands for not for long right if you're not unless they the right like way, you especially Chicago even for is in a very short leash yeah. he knows it yeah okay next topic Next topic here. We saw King Henry get signed to the Baltimore Ravens this year, uh, this just last week. Um, are the Ravens the hunted in the AFC now, or is it still another team? If so, please name that team. Kansas City. <laughs> Go ahead. Adam. Yeah, did they trade for Patrick Mahomes, or was they it? They did not trade for Patrick the, Mahomes. The, the the banged up star running back. Um, I, we see this every year in the league. We know that, right? Right, like we really do. We see some acquisition of some top tier player. Not saying that he, you know, won't make great plays, but as I said in the chat a few days ago, they their game has always still been predicated off of what Lamar Jackson can do with his legs. Yep. If he can't if he's shot putting the ball up there to to, to players. Like that, let's uh, let's not forget they didn't lose in the AFC Championship because they weren't good enough to win. They started having mental errors and all this other stuff. Even with the style of play that they have, they still need their quarterback to make some throws, and they still had young receivers that made dumb mistakes. If they, it, it, that, That's just the bottom line. They had no reason to lose. So having Derrick Henry is just another reason for them to key in on that backfield, and there's two players back there that you can corral as, as good as they are. So I don't, I don't think it makes them less dangerous, but Kansas City has – the best quarterback of our generation, and good luck beating him. They, they, they just gave oh, him a speech. They, they did. Gave him what? They they gave him a and they just gave him Hollywood Brown, too. Yeah. Yep. They just gave him somebody. So, so Tyreek 2.0, or not 2.0 in, in quality, but that type of player. Yep. So uh, I'm good. I think that dude could, he could take me, pick <laughs> Lady A. Pick never running four foes no more. We know you never. Oh, you never we, we need the, we, we need the records to see that you were really running four fours. Back Al, then. can you tell him? But, Al, but this is the point, though. But this is the point. This is the point, though. We don't need you to run a four four. We just oh, need you to true. not drop the ball. You can catch him taking a face mask it. like they give you from I'm Little crazy. Giants. We're gonna go win a Super Bowl, bud, because we got Patrick Mahomes. Take a nap. Go ahead, see it. Go ahead, see it. Who you got, see it? Uh oh. I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm there. I don't think this makes, this, this does make them harder to defend. I'll say that because with King Henry there running the ball and Lamar doing his thing, it does make, this does make them harder to defend. But like Ant said, at some point he's going to have to make that throw. He's going to have to make a throw to somebody to, to, to make them respect his arm. I mean, don't get me wrong. We know that he's had games. Where they had to respect his arm, but once they shut down the run and he has to throw, and they know he's going to throw, which is what happened in the playoff game. You know, it, that's what happened in the playoff game. Yeah. Kansas City brought in that number four ranked defense. You know, and you had to do what you had to do to compete against them. And in the end, it ended up being Kansas City the one who's better team. So no, I don't think this. I don't think adding King Henry to this team makes them scarier to anybody else. Because Lady A. <laughs> again, if Hollywood Brown mm -hmm. catches any any ball out there, because you know Mahomes is gonna throw it, he's gonna throw it. So if they got if they mess around to get a guy with speed that's reliable, until Kansas City loses, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be Tay Tay again. Got you, got you. No, we no, thank you. Not the Tay Tay. <laughs> that irritated my soul. Hey. Swag, they have been a swag serving. We that that is not football. <laughs> that should not have made the news. No, nope, lady, eight, lady, eight. that's a question. So I think that Baltimore is definitely a force. I do. Are they the best? No. Um, they still have work to do, as everyone has already stated. Um. I think they're improving. They're going in the right direction. And I appreciate seeing that. I do feel as though that, you know, they have the tools to be a little, uh, be a problem. They're going to hurt some feelings. 
it, I mean, Derrick Henry was able to hurt feelings on a, a another team that I don't feel like had all the tools that Baltimore had. So, you know, <laughs> I can't stand Corey either. Why? Wait, I didn't put that. I didn't put that, Corey. I didn't put that. You know how they 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 hack me, but I I will say that um I'm I'm interested to see what Baltimore is going to do and how they improve over the next few years, um but they're not they're not the number one. I'm sorry, Pig. I, I'm just asking the question here. I mean, well, say it always okay, say. So, it. I got a question, man. You got to beat the man. They 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 did. You do got to beat the man. Yep. I got a question. Go ahead, Ann. This is for the group. You know, whoever wants to answer. Okay. So what we just detailed, right, is adding Hollywood Brown to that rather decrepit wide receiver room who was allergic to catching the ball. Uh -oh. That only made them better. Why? Because of their quarterback, right? Right. Now, when we right. look at Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. we just – we know he's got great talent. that We got in the first round, all of this stuff. And mm -hmm. it still came down to him having to make a throw that mattered to win that game. Right. So, pick. Are we still gonna act like we are not gonna put this on Dak Prescott? Uh, what? You, well, how did oh, we? Oh, that was good. Yeah. I'm great at this. I just want y'all to give me my flowers. How did we get here? <laughs> Always, I knew that was coming. Who I'm directing this at? Oh, okay, but. but... We're not going to talk about all the receivers that he needs to get in the draft. We're not going to talk about how he can't tackle himself and all this stuff. The quarterback has to make a play okay. to put his and team let, let over me, the edge me, at some point. And guess let, what? Let me that guy hasn't let me, done it, and he's been in the league for seven years. Ant been holding I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, oh, Mahomes God. has never not been in the AFC championship. Okay. Hey, uh, we're going to make accommodations for rain to come. Let me, let me There's nothing else quick. to talk about here. Let's let me just not up. bring no, it up no, ever again, no, Pick. And just I'm because done. you keep talking doesn't mean that it, there's no, not things to talk about here, okay? Oh, buddy, I'm the talking. The fact that you're just – no, you're just talking, okay? The, the, the difference between Dallas and the Chiefs and Lamar Jackson here, let's talk about it, is – Dallas does not have an offensive line. That offensive line is terrible. Oh my god! We know. We know. Please that don't say anything else like that again. That offensive line please. is terrible. Calvin, it's not. Please. This is not the. This Calvin, is not the Cowboys please. offensive. Stop him from Just because nonsense. he's talking doesn't I mean can't, that you. I don't understand that, correct, bro. Thank you. Well, well listen to your buddy. Well, listen this is, to your buddy then. And, <laughs> all right, there we go. Y'all don't have y'all don't have the offensive line that y'all had in the nineties when y'all were destroying people and y'all could run the ball and y'all could throw the ball at ease. Y'all don't have that. No, no one has that. You, <laughs> and don't forget that your defense was run run flawed. Okay, Baltimore's defense was not run flawed. Baltimore's defense was was a uh, pass rush challenge as we saw Patrick Mahomes do what he did versus Baltimore in the playoffs. Come on now. And then Patrick, Patrick Mahomes run on did the running backs run on Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes had a, a number one defense wow. this time when he went to Baltimore to play and came away with the victory. Jesus Christ. He's no, never had a number one defense. Back up. Hold on, hold on. Let's back up. Pick, you are in defense of Dak Prescott. I am defending Dak Prescott. Because he keeps saying it like Dak Prescott has everything that he needs. Y'all didn't really have a running back. Okay, but fact, name, all called, of the, if, if the Cowboys would have called Derrick Henry, if the Cowboys would have called Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry probably would have signed with them. True. He would have signed but, with but them. I feel like but they didn't pick up the phone convenient. to call. So y'all didn't have a running game. No, the only thing y'all no, did have, no. the only thing y'all did have was CD Lamb, CD Lamb, and Dak Prescott. That's what pretty much carried y'all this year <laughs> and being playing. You know, bro, you don't. <laughs> You Bruh. don't know what you're talking about. So wait, Pick. I want to make this clear. Yeah. Derrick Henry said that he would he wanted to go to Dallas, and it was literally a, a a convenience thing for him. I don't think that he was saying that Dallas had was such an amazing team. He said, I stay there in the off season. It sounds like he's he may even be a lifetime fan. I don't know. But he wasn't it's saying he never said that he would they were a good team, and that's why he wanted to go there. Truthfully, the only reason why he said that I saw that he was just like, Okay, 
it, it um he he needed to to be somewhere that was familiar it was convenient for him so i this is what i know and, this and, is what and i'm saying and, and it's it's real. Real. when it comes to hold on, right now. Hold on. Let, me, let me just say this. mediocre let i'm gonna say this though let me say this though you don't have to have a you don't have to have a, a top eight quarterback to win the Super Bowl. You don't have to have a top eight quarterback to win the Super Bowl. What's the difference? But what's the difference between Dak and those two quarterbacks that we were just talking about, though? And they're top tier quarterbacks, and you know what they have that Dak Prescott doesn't, and we can't even argue about this. Loads of talent. That I've Prescott isn't a talented you just, quarterback. You just, you just you just contradicted yourself. You said they have. Those teams have loads of talent. No, I'm talking about the quarterback. That's what I said. You're not listening as oh, usual. Listening. I said, I'm you listening. know what they have? And I'm talking about Lamar Jackson and oh, Patrick Jones. They have loads it. of talent. Don't worry about it because Dak isn't re restructuring his contract. No, so once y'all cut him so y'all can sign some of the players and he goes to another team, then we'll Oh, find now out we're going to learn. We're going to learn just, good, aren't we? I'm just telling you. you I'm just <laughs> telling you. Big talking about. He's an average quarterback. Okay. Alvin, will you just say this Man, so we can move on? Just answer this. I have, is Dak Prescott bring not, up Dak Prescott? Is he, or is you he not? Say, oh, just a, and, no, no, he's just and you, average and, and you, a little and, bit and above you average quarterback. Just yes tell no. everybody you're a free he's agent good, fan not great. right now. He's good, not great. That's all I'm saying. And That's a all I'm saying. Fan. So, so I agree with you, Pick. I agree with you. I agree with you when you say that you don't have to have the best quarterback to win a Super Bowl. You don't. But the problem is this, though. When he's had talent when he's had far more talent than he has right now with just one receiver when he had Zeke in his prime when he had mm. when he had when he had when he had um uh I, now mind you I'm only talking about for the role that he played when he had Creighton when he had um when he had uh Dez he had he had talent he had Witten these guys were not bums they were not past their prime when he had Tyron and he had he had all of these guys that I forgot the guy that hurt his neck and that's why he had to retire Fredericks, that was the center. We had the line. We had the the the, the okay defense. And he still threw two to three picks in all of those those plays. We had Jason Garrett. Oh, we're not talking about I'm Jason Garrett. Tall. He sucks. I'm, I'm I'm pretty tall, John. I'm, I'm not gonna. That's all I'm saying. Him. That's all I'm saying is we've seen him with talent. We've seen him with a better mind, so to speak, I and lesser talent. The last and he's still time the same I talked player. to Ant about Dak Prescott until he until he. Comes on here and says, I am a fan of this team. I will never talk Dak Prescott with you again. I'm writing Thank a note you. to myself a right here. Of what I'm team, a, exactly. He's a free agent. I don't know who he wants to be a fan of. No, oh, he's he's a, no, he's a, a, he's a Dallas Brady. Cowboy fan frustrated. I'm a fan of success. Amount of abundance. We put it. We over we over exaggerate Dak's success. And it's it's frustrating as a as a cowboy fan. And I am as Ant is. It's frustrating because we keep saying like that can get us over, but we see that he can't. When given the opportunity, he comes up short over and over and over again. I keep telling you he's good, not great. I got he a question. Needs... Sure. Why not put more talent around him? Why not well, put more talent? Well, he's well, good, well, not well, great. Put more well, talent around him. Let me, around answer, him. Let me then... answer that. Nice hey, guy, man. Let me say this. <laughs> well, you are a quarterback, right? <laughs> that can throw the ball. But you just making it to your your receiver, right? Just so even if it's an amazing receiver, if it's out of his reach, it's out of his reach, right? Sure. So that's on the quarterback, right? I got that. So got if that. that is just not good enough, then it doesn't matter who you put around him. Hey, wait, wait, hold one second, one second. Y'all, y'all last playoff game, y'all last playoff game. How many tackles did Dak make? What? This is <laughs> this is pointless, bro. No, okay. I'm not, I didn't even yeah, this. Can we move on to the next topic already? Can we yeah. talk about his turnovers? No, we don't we talk did. about that. That's not on the rundown today. <laughs> I, you just asked about rundown. tackles. That ain't on there I either. Did. I did. I did ask this question. I asked everybody put something in for the rundown. Didn't get it. Listen, we just talked about it. I guess our next our next thing is the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we looking at. Um, the men's side first. We're gonna look right. at the men's side first. Let's uh let's get this in real quick. Um, who you like, who you got? Who you like and who you got? Give me your final four. Let's get your final four for the men's side. Let's see something. We'll put it up. 
Oh, I didn't everybody do my going. homework. I'm writing it down right now. You write, you write it down, Lady A. Lady A is uh. Your mind's in my bracket. I'm writing it down because I, I have ready. ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Sid, you ready? I'm prepared. Say it's not ready. Ed, you ready? Ed, you didn't do your homework. Final four. Hey, this is not football. Final four, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm just on this on this point on this point under the obvious, Lady A. <laughs> okay, I, so no, I don't have a four, but I do have who I think the champion will be. Oh, okay. Oh, he he getting extra credit. Look at him. Dak Prescott will never win the final four. <laughs> oh, <laughs> done. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> You're so wrong. <laughs> okay. Say it. Are you ready yet? Oh yeah, go ahead. You know what? No, okay, go ahead. No, 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 I'm gonna no, no, shoot my shot. I'm gonna shoot my shot. It is oh, what it is. Uh uh give me uh oh, hold on. Give me LSU. Uh oh. Um uh, for the men. Huh? No, I'm looking at the women. I'm on the women's side. No, we, oh, we, on the men. we was on men's side. He we just said he didn't want to He said bracket, no, my I boy. Said men's side first. Okay, then I, I got to change brackets. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, All wait right. a minute. Hey, I got to change brackets. Drew did his homework. Drew did his homework, right? Drew said, Drew said he he said give him uh, UConn, Arizona, Houston, and Purdue. That's his final four right there. What? Uh, That's out. Never mind. Okay. Hold Go ahead, Ed. No, I'm trying to. I'm trying to hold on now. I'm ready. Don't do me like you ready. You ready, Go ahead, lady? Give it to us. Yeah, and I'm mad because Droopy uh, cheated off of my my paper. I thought he um, did too. I think so. So for East, I have Yukon, West, Arizona, South Houston, Midwest, Purdue. Midwest, Purdue. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's who I have. Al, you ready? Yeah, I have Houston in the South. I have Tennessee, North Carolina, and Yukon. North Carolina, Yukon, no Arizona. Okay, okay. Say it. Yeah, uh, I agree. I like I like the way Houston's playing. Give me Houston. Mm -hmm. Give me uh, South Carolina. In the uh, Midwest, give me. Uh, I thought I'm, about I'm, I'm looking for upset uh, in this plan bracket because you know they they got a plan uh, for the, for the, right uh, the West. Uh, give me uh, Mississippi State with the upset. Oh. And then give me. Um, yeah, I give me give me UConn uh, in the East. The East. Mm -hmm. It sounds like Watch a lot of SEC in there for you, said. That's a lot of SEC. In there. <laughs> Watch out for James Madison, oh, too. You gotta do what I gotta do. Mm. Give me all four to number one seeds going through. <laughs> that's just that's just lazy. That's just lazy work right there. That's oh, lazy work. You don't know what I did. You don't know what I did. You don't know my story. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know my story. <laughs> what? <laughs> don't you, don't don't you say, you give me Trump. Don't you dare. How do you know so I got this up the whole time? What? Right? Hey, <laughs> so say, say I got North Carolina, Purdue, Houston, and UConn. Oh, you know what? Like, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. My fault. Who's in, that, who's in that bracket? That's not true. In which bracket? In the in North the, the Purdue bracket? the Purdue bracket. No, no, no. Oh, I got uh, I got Texas. You got I got Texas. Ooh. You got you got Texas out there? Yeah. For, for the men. Number yes. seven, Texas. Yes, yes. That's a now. Listen, that is that is that is absolutely. This is probably the toughest bracket. Is is that is that uh Purdue bracket? That's probably Texas, the toughest bracket. Texas I see. played like some dogs earlier in the year, um, okay. and then they 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 kind of regressed for sure. But um, they were doing their thing. They they were they were making a lot of noise at one point. In all seriousness, true number one squad, but. Dang. They they too the they're, they're, they're too much of a farm system of one and done now, and these guys don't get to develop anymore. So 
the, you, you're not gonna run into a team that was stacked like AD's team to where you're just gonna walk to the to the finals anymore. So yeah. All right. Uh, did we get everybody? I think so. Say you gave me one, right? Yeah. I did. I did, lady. Thank you. Say it. Say it. We got you on the album. Thank, thank you, right, lady. So, I did. So yeah. here's mine. Here's mine. I got. I got <laughs> Al, you I got, gave I got, yours. Yes, I did. Okay, I thought I got, so. I got. I got. I got UConn. I I like Houston, but for some some reason it's telling me Wisconsin, and I don't know why it's telling me Wisconsin, but I, I like Wisconsin coming out of the South. I like Wisconsin coming out of the South. Um, Purdue scares me. Purdue scares me, and I'm going with a T team, and but it's Tennessee. Not Texas. It's Tennessee. Talk to then, it's, it's Tennessee, not Texas. And then give me Arizona coming out of that uh West that West region. All right, let's go to our women's bracket side. Let's go to our it's, women's it's bracket. More difficult. This is real hard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So? Definitely. Like, that's what we said. Yes. Yes. The women's I, is, uh, I thought I wanted, and then what? I, then I went back. I was like, I don't want that. But yeah, this is hard for me. A baller. The women's is. The women's is real. The women's is real tough here. Um, said I know you was already over there, so I know you're ready with the women. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you did that. Oh well, yeah, that play. came out give right. Me, me, uh, that came out. That came out. I'm taking South Carolina. Paul. Uh, UCLA. <laughs> give me the Zags of Fade Lake, like they always do, in Kansas. Mm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Kansas. You got. You got. Yeah. UCLA. Yep. You said the Zags to fade, so you got them going to the final four. Yep. They're gonna get. They're gonna get to the final four and fade like they always do. Okay. They're gonna either get. They're gonna either get. They're gonna either lose the week before or the week or the week after. It's one of them two. Take your pick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They've been close the last three four years. Let's be clear. They've been close the last three four years. Either they lost right at the final four. Or the week before the other the, the, the series game before the final floor. So you know, I'm gonna go with him again and see. So I noticed you didn't have an Iowa in there. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't. So I do. um, y'all got up messed up. I'm just I'm just saying, saying, man, I can't clock into that final for that final four, baby. Uh okay, okay. Uh mm-hmm. let's go, Al. Go ahead and make it do what it do. I like Iowa. I like South Carolina. Uh, who else? My number um, Stanford, and my fourth team was UConn. Yeah. UConn, Iowa, Stanford, and South Carolina. Okay, gotcha. Okay, okay. Come on, lady. A. I'm sorry. Hold on, UConn. What's a UConn? You know. You got all of them. I was South Carolina, Stanford, and UConn. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So I have South Carolina, and then I have LSU over Iowa. Mm. There we go. There we go. Then I have Stanford, and then I have UConn over USC. And <clears throat> then the final four. Hmm. Okay, Ant, come on. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, Get along to the room. no, 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 it ain't even that. I was trying to identify a few things, all right? Okay. UConn, they're not what they were. Stop it. But, but, have y'all seen that girl from USC play? Juju. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Give me USC, and not only because the tournament becomes a whole nother beast, she can do something mm-hmm. like Melo did. So, give me them. Give me Iowa. We know you want Iowa. Please stop it. <laughs> Y'all should have stopped Steph before he really got going. You feel me? Uh, <laughs> give me, give me, give me Tennessee, mm. and then I'll take uh, South Carolina. Okay, I didn't expect Tennessee. Yeah, on, yeah. that bracket is weak. They didn't even. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, lady. I just gave mine. Oh, you did. It's on me. Lord, 
Yep. So you ain't won no brackets now, pick. Don't be back like you go last, like you just did you did what you did the football play. I said you want to go last. You see how I'm, you do? I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I just was making sure everybody got theirs there. Uh, a couple of things. This Iowa, Iowa's uh, bracket, Iowa's bracket is really tough. And everybody just acting like they just going to shoot right through there, right? It's it's not that Iowa's just going to shoot right there, shoot right through that uh, bracket because they still got to run into LSU at some point if both of those teams make it make it that fight to the quarter quarters, I think it is, to the quarters. And then you still, you can't sleep on, you cannot sleep on um, Louisville from their bracket as well, mm-hmm. which – Actually, coming out of the first round, Louisville could possibly take out uh, LSU. Louisville is no slouch. So that that region is really tough. So I'm going to go with that one last. I do like South Carolina to make it to the Final Four. I also like um, USC to make it to the Final Four. The problem with USC is on on their side, they have – where is it? Nope, Ohio that's on State. the other side. Okay. You better stop. Yeah, they, they have Ohio State on their side. They have Ohio State on their side. And 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 Lying. coming out of Texas and Texas, I'm just gonna say they literally have probably the easiest region. Let's go back up to the south real fast. I'm sorry. Yeah, to region two. Region two. Mm-hmm. UCLA, Louisville, and LSU can mess all this up. They could mess the whole thing up, but it's going to be great. That bracket is going to be really, really great to see. And out of there, give me UCLA out of Region 2. Okay. Yep. Give me UCLA out of Region 2. That's two two teams from California making it. South Carolina and then Texas. You looking at my paper? Yeah, he did. He be cheating. I'm not. I'm not looking at your paper, but yeah, that's the way I see that right there. The women's the women's side is going to be a lot to watch. I can't wait for this uh, for tomorrow to get going um, and see these upsets. So um, yeah, it's it's going to be real tough. We did not do a bracket challenge this year because uh, last year we didn't have enough participation like we did our our first our first couple of years. When we well, had, we, uh, we got 198 viewers, so maybe maybe it'll change. You know, we do got 198 <laughs> viewers, but uh, yeah, you know, yeah, due to due to uh, sponsorship and things like that at this time right now, uh, we don't <laughs> have nothing to offer except for a congratulations to the wind hub, right? <laughs> Catch us next year around bracket time, and we'll see what we can do. And said, maybe, maybe oh. we'll get our survivor pool back for the NFL once that kick off too. For sure, bro. John hey. Green the third is a menace, man. All right, I got, a, I got, a, uh, I got a couple of corrections right quick. Uh, uh, Alvin, uh, Justin Fields this is his last year's contract. He's an unrestricted free agent next year. What? Uh, Lady A. He's still uh, on his rookie contract, I thought. He still got his rookie no, no, contract. No, I, I got it up on sports track. He in the last year's okay. contract. He's, he's, un, he's an unrestricted free agent uh, next okay. year. Uh, okay. Don, uh, whoever it was in the chat that asked about uh, Lamar, uh, them not running the ball. In the game against the Chiefs, three run, two running backs got three carries apiece. Lamar Jackson ran the ball eight times. He kept the ball in the option. So that's why they lost against the Chiefs. Numbers speak for themselves. Oh, so he didn't throw, huh? <laughs> hey. Hey, um, question, question, question for y'all. Um, this Saturday we got tournament play. We doing a show or not? You just mean like a regular show? Yeah, we doing a show. We got tournament play. Are we doing a show or not? So, I mean, it's the first weekend of March Madness. That's going to be tough. I ain't going to lie. Only because I know, man, people be locked in on them turning. It's the first weekend of March Madness. Let's take it first week. So we, yep. So it, there it is right there live on the air. We will see y'all next Tuesday. Hold on. Wait, Lady A, we don't have coach this week, right? No. Okay. No. We will see y'all next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. No show Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy March Madness. Said, did we cover everything? Yes, we did. We did. Since we did, shout out to my son, United States Air Force. First string podcast, second to none. Come get some. Tell him, say it. Go dogs. Hey. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I missed the music. <laughs>